This video was made to demonstrate the CU Boulder Talos XCME spacesuits. So we're going to have Sid, Don, and Doc this suit to demonstrate that procedure. Sid's going to start by donning her LCG, her liquid cooling garment, making sure that the hoses are on the right hip when she dons. Also being careful of the tubing. The vest is stretchy and should be put over the head just like a t-shirt. We just encourage you to be cautious when doing so. Awesome. So now that Sid has her LCG on, she's going to move over to x which is the XEMU Dawn Dock Assembly. To start, she's going to lower the x straps using this mechanism here. She will pinch to release and allow the suit to be lowered. So it's going to lower this so that she can pull up a chair behind it, which will aid her in her dawn and dock. The next step here is to unlock the hatch on the back of the HUT. HUT stands for hard upper torso. So she needs to undo this latching mechanism. To do so, you simply turn the lock and then open the hatch. Now we see the inside of the HUT. Some things to be mindful of here. We have some straps which help support you in the HUT as well as some tubing which provides liquid cooling and airflow to the helmet, which is not currently attached. Before getting in, Sid is going to make sure she pulls out the straps so they do not get tangled when she steps into the hut. Next, she will sit in the chair and begin to put her legs into the pants. This is a great time to remind everyone that it's important to wear good socks when doing this. After Sid puts her legs in, you'll see she grabs into the suit and is pulling up the pant legs. So the easiest way to don the pants is to pull them up from the inside. The boots of the spacesuit are attached to the pants already. So once she gets down to this level, she will put her foot into the boot and pull on the pants to secure. This process can require a little bit of finagling to get correct, but once you have it done, it's nice and easy for you. Sid's next step is going to be to plug in her liquid cooling garment into the two quick disconnects labeled LCG, as you can see there. To do so, she will simply slide the disconnect on the LCG side into the disconnect on the hut side. You will hear a click, which will tell you that it is in place. If you need to disconnect your LCG quickly for any reason, simply push the silver button and it will disconnect. Now that we have her LCG connected, Sid is going to very carefully stand up. She's going to be using the x beta straps as support to help her stand. Now that she is standing, she will start to pull up the hut using the x beta straps. A tip for this is that if you're having a hard time pulling one of the straps, you can take an arm and lift the hut and pull the other strap. That creates some slack in the x eta line and can make it a lot easier to pull the strap up. Sid's gonna pull this up all the way to the point that she can comfortably fit her head into where the helmet should go. We'll show you that correct positioning in just a moment. Mm -hmm. 
as you can see, she just put the arm in because she got to the point where her arm could fit into the sleeve of the suit. And she is now using her arms in the suit to pull on the X Ada straps. Once you are at the point where you have gotten your hut in the correct positioning, um, you can ask your test assistant to help you adjust it if necessary. So Sid is right about perfect. You can see her shoulders are level with the opening of the arms. It's super important that your shoulders are in the correct spot. Otherwise, it is difficult to move the arms of the suit. So now that Sid is in the suit, the hard part for her is over. Now I, as her assistant, am going to come in and help her finish connecting everything. So the first thing I'm going to do is double check these LCG lines and make sure they are not kinked. If the LCG lines get kinked, you can have problems with your liquid cooling. So I'm just going to make sure that these are nicely curved and not kinked anywhere. Next. I'm going to do her back strap. So these straps are all adjustable. A bit can be slightly difficult to adjust. So you just connect and pull to tighten. You want to make sure that you tighten these straps well because these straps are helping to support the weight of the spacesuit. So you're basically wearing this spacesuit almost like a backpack. So once you have this strap connected, you're just gonna tuck this strap in down here. And up next, we're gonna go to her shoulder straps. So each shoulder, it is Velcroed to the inside of the hut. You have a shoulder pad and a strap. You're going to wanna to position the pad on her shoulder and then connect it. We're going to connect them crisscross in the back and pull to tighten. Again, position strap, connect, and pull to tighten. Once I've gotten these tightened, I'm going to ask Sid and make sure that it's comfortable. That's good. Okay, good there. Yes. And then, good here. Yes. And now that we have her all set, we're going to double check her air ventilation tube, which you can see has gotten disconnected here. We're going to push this back on. And then close the hatch. Once the hatch is closed, we're going to lock it in place and double check with a slight tug that it is locked. And that is how you don the XCMU spacesuit. Now that we have Sid in the hut, we're going to connect her life support systems. First thing Sid's gonna do is turn on her air ventilation system, which is this switch over here. She will flip it on. And as you may be able to hear, she now has a fan going that is located in, that is embedded in the hatch. This fan provides airflow to the helmet here. Once we put her helmet on, she will have cool air washing away any carbon dioxide she may exhale and helping to cool her head. Up next, we're gonna connect Sid to the vise, which will provide water cooling. So first thing we're gonna do is hand her her umbilicals. And she's going to use the mirror located on her wrist to read these labels and connect the correct colored umbilical matching the umbilical straps to the knob. You should hear a click once they're in place. Excellent. Now that Sid has her umbilicals connected, she's going to turn the two water control valves to vice mode. Once again, using her wrist mirror to read the labels. Now that she is in vice mode, she can turn the flow knob towards higher. Once 
which will open up the flow and allow her to have water enter into her liquid cooling garment and cool her from our habitat. Perfect. So, now that she's hooked up on the umbilicals, uh, we're going to show you how she's going to unhook from the umbilical when she goes out on her EVA. So, um, we're going to start by yes. turning her around and attaching her plus, her X plus, her exploration portable life support system. So, we're going to start by unhooking Sid. She's going to shrug a little bit to help get these things off. She's fully capable of doing this herself, but uh, we wanted to just, oh, there you go. Full demonstration. All right, so Sid, if we can have you turn around for us, be mindful of your umbilicals. Another note is that whenever you're in the suit and you have the umbilicals connected, it is important to be mindful of where your umbilicals are. It can be difficult to see in the suit, see the ground, due to the field of view of the helmet. So it's always something that you should be mindful of. If you start to feel resistance where you're walking, pause, take a step back, bend up the waist slightly, and look down to see if your umbilicals are catching on anything. All right, now that we have Sid back in the x -Ada, we're going to show you how we connect with the x -Lis. So this is Sid's x -Lis. take off the cover. It's connected with elastic here. And set this aside for a moment because we're going to come back to it in just a moment. So I'm just going to set it right there. So in the x -Lis, we have a bladder full of water which will provide liquid cooling during the EVA. This water will be kept in the refrigerator until your EVA so it should be cold. This water is connected to a pump, which pumps the water into the suit. An electrical switch, which hooks up to your DCU, which is the unit in the front, which has all of the switches and knobs. So you can control your water flow from the DCU. And a fan, which pumps fresh air into the x -Lift to supply your air ventilation system. And this is that fan that we discussed earlier that is embedded in the hatch. So to take this, this will not, to take this off of the rack, we're going to pull these pit pins here. And set them aside, being careful not to lose them. And then lift the x -Lift up and off the rack and on to Sid's back. We're going to be using these guide pins to line up where the x -Lift should go. This will not have to be done by our test subjects, but we do want you to understand how it works. So these, umbilic these lines right here come in from the hut and we're going to pass them in through the hole and the X was here. And then lift this up and onto her hatch. So you can see it's in place now. I'm going to take the pit, which I just dropped one of and put them in, making sure they are secure. So the x doesn't move during her EVI. Up next, I'm gonna connect these red to red, blue to blue, purple to purple. And tuck all of these in before placing her cover back on. Awesome. 
awesome. Now that we have Sid in her with her explicit attached, we're going to show you how she disconnects from the umbilicals. So now that we have Sid's explicit on, we're going to show you how she switches from having her umbilicals connected to using her explicit for cooling. So first thing we're going to do is turn the flow knob all the way to lower. Once that's lowered, we're going to turn both of these valves to the closed position. And finally, we're going to disconnect the umbilicals by pulling with a thumb and forefinger on the straps. Perfect. A little bit of water might leak out. That's okay, perfectly normal. It's just the water that got stuck in the ball valve in between changes. So now that her umbilicals are disconnected, she's going to switch these once again to X plus mode. And then turn her X plus power on and open the flow valve all the way to higher. Once she starts feeling cooling, she can stop turning it. Having it open higher helps out with just general water flow. So we definitely recommend opening up uh, the water lines to a good bit higher when you're in explicit mode. Now that we have Sid's life support system all working for her EVA, we're going to put on her gloves and her helmet and send her on her way out of the habitat. So first things first, we're using these single-use cotton gloves inside of our space seat gloves for COVID safety purposes. So your test assistant is going to help by holding the glove and you'll put your fingers in and again with the other. And then we will take our actual space suit gloves and do the same thing. All right, and our final step is putting Sid's helmet on. So I'm going to let Sid demonstrate this. First, you need to have this longer tab on the bottom. When you're in the suit, it's your bottom left. She will place the helmet carefully in the grooves. Perfect. And then slot, twist it to lock it in place. If you have any difficulty, you can ask your test assistant to help you out. It can be a little tricky to get the helmet on, especially if you're not super used to the suit. And this is your completed XCMU suit, ready for a day on the moon. So Sid has just gotten back from her EVA. We've taken off her helmet and her gloves already. Uh, she did some great work out there on the surface of the moon. So now we're gonna get her out of the suit. First thing that she's gonna do is turn off her x power, then turn her flow knob all the way down to lower. Again, using that wrist mirror in order to see the text since it is written in reverse. Once that is all the way lower, she's going to change the knobs here, the valves, excuse me, here, to valve closed. And once again, if a little bit of water leaks out of here, that's perfectly normal and okay. There's nothing wrong there. Next thing we're going to do is get the x off of Sid's back. And be communicative with your test assistant during this process. It really helps us to make sure that you're comfortable. If at any point you're uncomfortable with the weight of the x the suit, anything going on, please let us know immediately and we'll do everything we can to 
remove weight, make you more comfortable. Um, this should be a fun experience for you guys. So now that sits back, we're going to get her exos off. Since she has her exos power turned off. So first we're going to remove this cover again. Place it to the side. And just do the opposite of what we did to hook it up. Again, this is not something that you will have to complete. We just want you to be aware of the process. So this tug that I'm about to do to pull this off can be a little bit jarring. So I'm going to warn Sid. Hey Sid, I'm going to tug now and just brace yourself a little bit. So Sid's just ready now and just pull it off. It's not a big tug, but it's just something to be aware of. Again, being careful that those hoses come out and don't get caught on anything. And then I'm going to put the x list back on its rack. And finally, oh, I seem to have lost my Velcro. Um, re Velcro these back in place. And that completes our exless removal. Okay, so now is the point that our participants and your second crew member will doff the seats. You will do this, just the two of you guys, just as you will don the seats, just the two of you. The only time you're going to have external help is with exless uh, removal and attachment. So we're going to help Sid doff. So first things first, we're going to open this latch here and unlock the hatch of the hutch and open it. Next, we're going to unhook these straps, re-velcroing them back in place. And once we have that done, we're going to grab our chair and put it behind Sid so she can start to lower herself down with the X Ada. She's pulling her arms out, as you can see, and is using the X Ada to lower the hut. As you can see, says using the slack method that we kind of talked about earlier, creating some slack to make it a little bit easier to move the hut up and down on the X Ada. And once she gets to a comfortable point, she can sit in the chair, unhook her LCG, and remove her feet. And again, if a small amount of water comes out, a few drops, not a big deal. Um, that's pretty normal. It's just the water that got stuck in the quick disconnect before you disconnected it. If it's any more than a few drops, let us know. So now that she has gotten rid of that, she's going to make sure all of our straps are in the hut and close it. Now that Sid is completely out of the suit, we're going to have her take off her LCG, which she can take off just like a t-shirt, again, being mindful of the tubing and place aside. She might want to pull on the X Ada straps to lift the hut up and out of the way. And then she can continue her time in the HLS crew cabin mock-up with her crewmate.